Hello. Okay, so before we go into the presentation portion of it, we just kind of wanted to give you guys a little insight onto what KCCP stands for and how we impact our communities. And so we'll be watching a short video of Aiden's story. If you were at DCON, you probably remember Aiden Chin, who came up to the stage and shared his story. So throughout this presentation, feel free to ask questions in the comment box, and we'll address them in the end, and all questions are encouraged. So here we go. I don't expect my cancer to come back. It's a new chapter in my life. I guess there is a sense of being a child, being a teen again. So there are times when I do feel free. I don't think I could ever fully go back to what it was like before. Ben was seven years old and I was only 11, so we both were just kids, right? I had no clue. I, I, I heard the cancer word, I was just like, what is that? Okay, maybe I'm going to see him uh, tomorrow. My eyes kind of started opening up and I was just like, Aiden's not going to be here for a while. I'm only going to see him maybe a couple times a week. It just keep on going to my head, like, what if he was not going to make it? What if I wasn't going to see him at home anymore? There were times when I was feeling really sick and out of it and tired, and there were times when it wasn't always the chemo. It was about how other patients in the hospital were doing. You, you don't know what it's like, because I've been through so much pain, but I won't be here for two weeks. They've been here for... Six months, you say? And I was sad that there were other patients and there were other children that were younger than me going through cancers that were harder than mine. Basically, from that point on, I was like, why don't I try to get through it and then hopefully come back and help out? That's what I've basically been trying to do since I've been a treatment. to join this club at the hospital called the Oncology Team Group Club. It's something that you can't find out of the hospital. As a survivor, I'm still part of the team group. There's still a lot of support that I can give to them and they can give to me because there's an understanding that uh, treatment isn't over when you're a survivor. There's still um, an emotional side of things. You have friends that are going through it, friends that are, aren't going to make it through it, and that becomes a reality for you. It's not just over. Mark was a friend of mine that I met in the hospital, and uh, she became basically a, um, a sister to me. Brooke was definitely the closest friend that I had that I lost. The day before she passed away, I did get to see her in the hospital, and I did get to hold her hand, talk to her, and say goodbye, and tell her I loved her one last time. And I don't believe that you can accept something like that. You have to, I guess, learn to cope with it more. Before, I felt like cancer was something that was rare, that one in a ton of kids would be diagnosed, but it's not rare, and there's a lot of kids in oncology, children that are going through what you went through, and pain that is um, unexplainable. I want to be able to give back to those that have helped me in the hospital, that have made it so that I can go out there and be active and just live my life again. It's a really good feeling that I could just go home and do something with my brother now. Without Children's Hospital, my brother wouldn't be here, so I'm eternally grateful for them being there. I'm looking forward to staying connected to the hospital because it's been such a big part. Giving back and uh, pursuing the dreams that I have and being able to do that because of Beast Children's Hospital. <laughs>
All right, so before we introduce ourselves, um, as a general outline in this webinar, we will be discussing what exactly KCCP is, providing fundraising tips, introducing KCCP Week, and answering any questions that you may have regarding KCCP or KCCP Week. Um, so hi, I'm Danielle, and I'm your Pacific Northwest District Project Chair. Hi, I'm Andrew, and I currently serve as the Lieutenant Governor of Division 21, and also as a committee member on the District Project Committee. And hi, I'm Jane, and I currently serve as Lieutenant Governor of Division 56, and also as a committee member on the District Projects Committee. Thank you to everyone for uh, who joined us today. The mission of Qantas Children's Cancer Program is to raise awareness to fund and support pediatric hematology and oncology fellowships in partnering hospitals in order to prevent and move towards finding a cure for children's cancer. Our vision is that the expansion of this program so a global scale will not only benefit children cancer patients by finding the cure to childhood cancer, but also benefit cancer patients worldwide through the research conducted. Um, so where exactly did KCCP come from? Well, KCCP was founded by the past Pacific Northwest Kiwanis Governor Frank Morehouse in 2010, and his inspiration came from a young cancer patient um, named Penny, who was diagnosed with a brain tumor and who requires surgery and radi radiation therapy as a result. So past Governor Frank, um, he actually worked at the hospital where Penny stayed, and Penny would also frequently visit him during her hospital stays to talk to him about what was happening with her and to share her life story. Unfortunately, after a long and hard-fought battle, Penny eventually <coughs> lost her life due to her cancer and therefore KCCP was founded in dedication to her memory. So Kiwanis Children's Cancer Program is different from a lot of other cancer research programs in that it primarily focuses on children's cancer. So adulthood cancer treatments may be very harmful if children adapt them in trying to cure their cancer. However, if we find a cure for children's cancer, that could be used to find a cure for adulthood cancer. Um, a really cool and unique Thing that Jane already touched on about KCCP is that all the money that we raise goes directly into our communities and they directly affect people within our state, within our cities, and within our own communities that experience childhood cancer and that have to go through that. So the three hospitals that KCCP is present in are Dorpicker Children's Hospital in Portland, Oregon, Seattle Children's Hospital in Seattle, Washington, and BC Children's Hospital in Vancouver, BC. Our goal as a district is to raise $75,000 by Decon 2018, and that funds one fellowship for a researcher to conduct his or her research. Currently of September 1st, 2017, we have raised $12,430.14. Okay, so now that we have a basic understanding of what we fundraise for, here are some fundraising planning guidelines and some tips. So the first thing you want to do is understand the cause. By fully understanding the cause, you're able to give the audience a reason to donate or a reason to support what you do. Um, when working with KCCP, it is important to share your mission as just as it, it's just as important to share your mission as it is to simply raise funds. And a good way to do this is by implementing the use of flyers. Um, some helpful flyers were emailed out and released to you earlier this month, but I will also send, send them out to the officer Google groups later tonight. Some facts that you can use to easily convey the mission of KCCP are, um, this is kind of a summary of fact, like points that we've already touched on in this webinar already, but Kids can negatively be affected in their future growth and development due to the severity of adulthood cancer treatments. Um, the research done towards curing adulthood cancers does very little to help cure children's cancer, but the research done towards curing children cancer does significantly help find the cure to adulthood cancers. And although KCCP is based in the Pacific Northwest and created for people from the Pacific Northwest, KCCP is a long-term project that we hope to extend to a global program and because, I mean, all around the world, children's cancer affects many families and thousands of children are diagnosed with cancer each year, but with the help of research, their chances of surviving have more than tripled. 
So not only will this benefit children cancer patients from the Pacific Northwest specifically, but it will also benefit all cancer patients worldwide. And it also helps to sell it um, to, like when you're fundraising, to, to tell people that these funds are going to hospitals that they're familiar with. So just like as an example, you can tell people that you're supporting Seattle Children's Hospital if you're from the Seattle area because um, that's the hospital that they're most likely most familiar with. Step two is understanding your audience. Although key clubbers are always more than eager to contribute, the goal is to reach out and gain awareness and support from the rest of our communities. Currently around the PNW district, key clubbers are pretty knowledgeable about and familiar with the concept of KCCP. However, our schools and communities may not have heard a single thing regarding the program. This school year, let's really try to change that by raising awareness and gaining support from those respect respective audiences. Like Andrew said, um, another aspect into reaching out to the community and our schools is to understand how we're going to fundraise. So what we did for you guys is that we categorized um, generic fundraisers into four main ca categories, goods, services, events, and organized donations. Um, some examples of goods are maybe selling concessions at big events like school sporting games or school plays, um, grams, which are basically notes that people send to each other at school, it, a fun way to get people involved and to raise awareness, or partnering with local businesses like Chipotle or Yogurt Land or maybe some family-owned businesses. Um, some examples of services are car washes, when it gets warmer, of course, or like dog walking or bell ringing or doing stuff for our communities. Um, when thinking about services, be sure to keep in mind what time of year it is and what will be most beneficial to your audience. Um, another thing is events. So this is like concerts or sporting tournaments like a soccer tournament or a basketball three-on-three -three tournament which are very popular among schools, or organized donations like Miracle Minutes um, during games, plays, big events in your community, or again, bell ringing. So something that I want to say to you guys is that many times it's easy to rely on your lieutenant governors or kind of bigger figures like adults um, to plan the bigger fundraisers. But I'd like to point out that one of our biggest fundraisers in the Seattle area, at least, and I know in the Portland area, um, DTC or Dance to Cure, was originated out of one single club. So don't feel discouraged or don't feel as if it's something that you guys are not able to do. I would love to see more schools and more individuals host these type of fundraisers in the future. Um, and it's not even a big officer board or anything. It actually just started out with three really committed members who raised over a thousand dollars in one night and it started a trend and it was very popular so I hope to see that happening in the future as well. Okay let's talk about advertising. Advertising is a crucial component towards raising awareness and there are multiple mediums through which you can advertise such as creating and distributing, distributing flyers, um, posting on social media, sending out informative emails and informing your peers through school announcements, the radio, or simply by word of mouth. Of course, there's still other numerous options out there, but um, you guys should utilize whatever resources you have to achieve maximum effectiveness. Not all clubs and divisions function the same way, so do what works best for your individual club and division. And also, when you're advertising, try to be as transparent as possible. Remember to emphasize the reasoning behind why someone should donate and should support this program and where exactly the money is going. Also, I would like to take this time to uh, remind you guys that you guys can use the chat function to ask any questions you might have um, through any of the presentations. So, um, or you guys can use the Facebook page where there is the thread. Oh, okay. And do that. Now here are some tips and tricks to make your fundraiser the most effective and successful. The first tip is be respectful. So first ask at an appropriate time. If you're gonna ask um, adults for involvement in your fundraisers, um, maybe emailing them at midnight, maybe that's not the best idea. So um, try to find the best time that works for um, them 
rather than yourself. So yeah. And then next, try to overlap locate try not to overlap locations or communities. And this pertains mainly to asking for donations door to door. So um if you know your uh neighboring school key club is already doing a fundraiser in their neighborhood, then maybe it's not the best idea to uh, go to that neighborhood and um, ask for donations as well. Um, the next bullet point is make sure that people have a couple of minutes to spare. So just ask if they have the time to um, help you guys with a fundraiser. If they don't, then um, you don't want to keep them waiting and just send them on their way. But if they do have a moment to spare, then uh, make sure you guys not only advertise your products but um, or services, but also um, inform them just a little bit about what a KCCP is all about. And the final um, part of tip one is trust your members. Sometimes they have ideas and opinions that the board may not have considered. So um, members' input is really important when it comes to Key Club and um, even planning fundraisers, um, you want to make sure that the members' input is implemented into those fundraisers. Okay, so the next tip is about how to maximize profit and how to make the biggest impact that you can. So when making goals for your fundraisers, I th think that's the first tip or first step to really maximizing your profit because by making goals, you're able to communicate them with your audience and keep them updated. Um, for example, if you have a goal of $100 and let's say you've only raised 20, it makes people wanna help you reach your goal and donate. Whereas on the other side, if you're maybe at like $90 and your goal is $100, by communicating your goals, you're getting people involved to like strive for that last $10. Um, this will help the event gain more momentum and help it gain support and it'll kind of help people understand in perspective how you guys are doing and um, how they can help you. And another thing is looking around your local community for support. Um, Many businesses and organizations are willing to donate or help your cause. If you guys are taking notes, a list of them would be um, QFC, Fred Meyer, Target, Trader Joe's, um, and kind of those bigger organizations. Um, the only thing you guys have to do is that you guys have to email me at project at pnwkeyclub.org and get an official letter saying, kind of the missions of KCCP, what we stand for, and what your fundraiser is going to be about. Um, per, I personally raised over $500 doing this last year, or collected over $500 so that we could support our fundraisers. Um, it was very simple, and all you needed to do was take the letterhead that I wrote for you, and um, I write for you to the customer service, and they usually donate either goods, like um, canned foods or what you guys need, or they donate gift cards in which you guys can go shopping at their stores. Um, I know that this also pertains to a couple of family-owned businesses, so don't count those out, but I know for sure that those bigger businesses do get involved in those. And this is because Key Club is considered a nonprofit organization, therefore we have a tax deductible, which a lot of companies do use to, um, for their benefit as well. Okay, so the next tip is just to have fun. Remember to have fun when you're advertising, fundraising, and just remember the cause that you're supporting. Um, we would, we're, ta we're encouraging you guys to invite your friends to join you, and these people don't have to be key clubbers. In fact, if you reach out to people who are not in key club, this will not only allow the word of KCCP to spread further outside of the K family circle, but it will also perhaps... Um, draw those people to join Key Club by their participation in this campaign. So just when fundraising, always remember to be enthusiastic, passionate, and excited about your cause because this will only make the importance of this campaign evident to your audience and make them more likely to be supportive and enthusiastic about this campaign along with you. So now I would just like to briefly talk about um, Qantas and how they can be involved in your fundraisers. So Qantas, if you guys didn't know, is our parent organization. Um, they're the ones who've uh, helped Key Club start 
and they're of course always willing to help so make sure you invite them to your events and um, make sure you guys have a really good uh, method of communication so that whether that means um, visiting their meetings uh, once a month or um, staying in contact with their club president through email um, just through those communication methods just pitch your ideas to them and see how they can help and always keep them updated with how you're doing um, that doesn't always have to be in person it can be through just a uh, casual text message or email and um, make sure to participate in their service projects so make sure the support um, towards uh, each other's um, service projects is making. Um, kind of going off what Andrew said, Kwanians are the ones that helped you start your club. So they're very much involved and very much in support of Key Club's missions as well as what Key Club stands for and as well as how you guys are thriving and what you guys are striving to do in the future. So like Andrew said, please try your hardest to keep in contact with your Kwanians. Um, something that I would like to highlight would be maybe sending a member every monthly meeting they have or once in a while to maybe go in and thank them in person and by thanking them it's not just verbally thanking them but also by helping them in their fundraisers and um, in the long run that could also benefit you because Kwanians in the end are here to benefit and support us. Um, so something that we'll go over next is KCCP week and so if you guys didn't know Today was the first day of KCCP week, and it's the webinar, so yay. Um, so the outline of KCCP week is that today it's the webinar. Tomorrow there is a social media campaign, so October 3rd. And um, Wednesday is a school emphasis day. Thursday is when the blog will release a bunch of short stories about cancer survivors within our own communities, as well as some from our governor, Dimitri Saveri, as well as um, some stories from fellows and uh, doctors, I believe. Um, and then the last day is our community outreach day. Um, these will all be um, repeated in a little bit in more detail. So. Oh, oops, there's a slide. Um, so the objectives of KCCP Week is to raise funds for KCCP, as we said in the, in, as we said before, but it's also to bring community awareness to KCCP. So this is kind of what we talked about a little earlier when we talked about spreading the why behind what KCCP stands for. Um, our district project kind of has two goals. We're raising funds as well as raising support. So this week allows for both of that. Um, okay, so tomorrow is social media day, as Danielle have, has just mentioned, but if you have not already yet, or if you know any members who have not sent a photo to, or emailed a photo to project.pnwkeyclub.org for an overlay, which you can see on the screen, those are two examples of um, what the overlay looks like, but please get those in soon. Those for those of you who have already emailed a photo, the for the most part, the photo should have been emailed back already, along with uh, a blurb, and that kind of explains what KCCP is for you to post with your photo tomorrow. And in that blurb is also an online donation link. So this day is mainly designed to reach people or reach your peers outside of your immediate community, um, which is why we're emphasizing like online donation and everything and so just please share through all of your social media um, accounts and spread the message of KCCP. Um, so if you guys want to pull out your phone we'll give you guys a minute to send those in right now because this is tomorrow's campaign so um, just to kind of put into perspective the idea behind this kind of as Jane touched on uh, this is kind of going to be similar to like a GoFundMe type of thing, except it's using our very own website um, where you can reach out to maybe like family members who don't live near you or old friends and they'll be able to support you and what you do. Okay, moving on. Hopefully you guys have sent your pictures in by now. 
Uh, next is the school emphasis day. And um, you know in the beginning of the presentation we were talking about how we, we really wanted to bring awareness about KCCP to our schools and communities. And this is where we uh, start with that. So we want to bring awareness to schools and we want this to be directed more towards non-key clubbers as uh, key clubbers are pretty knowledgeable about uh, what KCCP is all about through um, you know all the social media posts and um, all the events for KCCP that we have and some resources that you have to help you with this school emphasis day are flyers, um, announcements like the morning announcements and if you go to this link um, it will give you a bunch of school outreach, outreach ideas and um, some of those ideas are uh, you put up flyers around school or make a big poster. Um, you wear your KCCP gear that you ordered. Uh, you conduct a miracle minute during lunch. Um, donation jars in front of the in front of classes. And so, officers and members, this one is completely on you. And for um, an event organized by the lieutenant governors, that will be coming up shortly. Okay, so like I said before, Thursday is Share Your Story Day, and you guys don't need to do anything on that day except read and share and like the blog that will be released. Um, so Community Outreach Day is what is going to be held on Friday, and this day is going to be planned by our Lieutenant Governors, which, is, which means that there's no work for you. All you need to do is show up, bring a friend, get involved, um, and just to kind of put into perspective how much of an impact we're going to be making on this one day, um, we as a district are projected or are planning to raise over $10,000 on this day. And each division has their own goal, and if every division re reaches their goal, we'll surpass 10000 by a lot. So th for this day, all you guys need to keep in mind is an open mind, and inviting your friends and really getting involved and reaching out to the community. This day is kind of like Andrew talked about how School Emphasis Day is for reaching out to your school. This day all the fundraisers should be directed towards your community. Um, so as we finish up the kind of informational session, we wanted this uh, webinar to be very interactive and we wanted to answer any questions, concerns, or um, dramas you guys have about KCCP, about fundraising, um, about ideas, about anything you guys really have to say. Um, this is your guys' time to talk. So if you guys want to comment in the I chat box or if you guys want to. Oh, yeah, Andrew will read those. First question. Or if you guys want to post on Facebook. Um, can we get this presentation to show my Key Club members? Uh, okay, so yes, we were, are recording this presentation at the moment, and so the recording of this will be released right after we finish. Oh, I just got a question. So it says, what are your future plans to achieve our goal of $75,000? Andrew, do you want to answer that, Jane? What was the question? Okay, just, uh, what are your future goals, like our future goals as a district to achieve our goal of $75,000? I think that's a question for you. Okay, sorry, this is my, yeah, this is kind of my question. So our future goals is, as I kind of talked about earlier, this is kind of the first district-wide campaign that we've had for KCCP, um, which is KCCP Week, and the goal behind our committee is that we're looking for ways that every single club or every single division, no matter how big, how small, how different, how diverse, can get involved in their in different ways and get get involved in a way that's effective and that's um, that kind of highlights their strengths. And then so that's what KCCP Week is about, and that'll help us. Um, gain a lot of momentum to reaching our goal and in the future around February we're looking at holding another campaign which is called Coins for KCCP. Um, it's not officialized yet but it's projected to be a campaign where LTGs 
will first um, take their officers and members who are very interested in leading their clubs um, on kind of a mock coins for KCCP run. And um, that's when you go door to door and you pitch what KCCP is and you ask for whatever donations they could give to you or support that they can give to you. And um, you hand them a flyer and you basically just share to one community as like a group. And after that, the officers and the very involved members would go back to their own clubs and they will kind of conduct the exact same fundraiser within their own clubs and within their own communities, seeing that some clubs are very far away from others and seeing that um, we all live in kind of different and diverse communities. So this will be another strive to reach our 75,000 goal in the future. Um, this is kind of highlighting teaching our members how to conduct themselves in a professional manner, as well as teaching our members how to portray KCCP um, in a positive light and in a light that they want to donate. Okay, another okay, question uh, was when you ask for donations from stores with the letterhead, should we talk to them prior to bringing the letter about possibly getting a donation? Um, it would, you could maybe send them an email um, seeing if they do do, they do participate in donations like that. But um, most stores like bigger corporations like QFC, Fred Meyer, Target, um, Trader Joe's, those kind of, oh, Rite Aid does it also. They have paperwork that you can fill out at, like in person, and um, that's usually done so you can go in without notice. Um, I would recommend contacting like maybe private businesses or family owned businesses or maybe businesses that you're trying to do like a restaurant fundraiser with prior to that but otherwise um, for big corporations I know that you can walk in and that it's pretty typical of them to donate on the spot or maybe donate um, in two weeks. So what I would say is go in in into the store in person two weeks ahead. Um, you don't need to contact them prior to that. Okay. Um, when it says pledge, is that referring to our personal pledge? Oh, yes. So um, that's relating to our overlays, correct? Um, so in our overlays, the kind of blurb that Jane was talking about was pledging to fundraise a certain amount of money. And um, that is your own personal pledge and to be very honest it could be range anywhere from like five to five hundred um, any amount of money is um, supporting our cause um, any amount of money is really just conveying to your friends on your social media or your audience um, what you guys stand for and what you guys hope to reach so it doesn't really need to be a number that you feel as if you can reach but just be a number that you hope to raise throughout this entire school year. Uh, can you give an amount of how much each division should fundraise? Um, Andrew, do you want to answer that one? Should I answer that one? So the goals um, of how much each division is fundraising really um, varies depending on the size of your division and also um, the area that your division covers. So. For example, um, for big divisions like um, Division 21 and 28, our goals are uh, $1,500 each. But I know there are, uh, there are divisions um, that have a smaller amount of members who have goals around a couple hundred dollars. And um, in the end, uh, if you're making an impact, um, the amount of like Money doesn't necessarily matter as long as um, you're all contributing in, into your best effort. I think that's what really matters in the end. So, yeah. And something that our governor, Dimitri, really highlighted is that the only way we can really reach our goal of $75,000 is by getting every division involved, even if it's smaller than me, a smaller amount than maybe the bigger divisions. You guys are just as important and just as impactful in reaching our goal. And if you're still interested after this, you can feel free to email me at project at pnwkeyclub.org and I will send you your divisional goal.
Yeah, can I just add something? And that's why this um, our divisional goals are so tailored to your specific division because we don't want any division to feel kind of discouraged that they can't fundraise as much as perhaps a bigger division. Um, like I said before, we do know that all divisions were, uh, run differently and they work differently. So as long as you can participate and reach the goal that is set for you, um, that would be, you know, that would be that would be help us reach our goal as a district. Yeah, um, I have a question. So um, someone says, is there any way that a member of Key Club can make a greater impact? What do you expect out of us to do so? So I think this is talking about like officers and LTGs versus members. Does anyone? Wait, can you repeat the question? Yeah, so is there any way that a member of Key Club can make a greater impact? Like what do you expect out of a member, I guess? Um, out of a member, so a lot of it is just participation. Um, Andrew talked about this before, but members may have ideas that officers have uh, maybe overlook. So if, I mean, just like sharing your ideas and getting your, what, getting like your, your word out there, I guess you could say, and participating in um, events that your officers hold and your LTGs hold. And yeah, I don't know. Is there anything else you guys want to add? Yeah, I would add that members have just as much potential um, on top of participation, but just have, have just as much potential in um, hosting these fundraisers and planning these fundraisers. Um, something that's very personal to me is that I actually began Key Club um, the beginning of my junior year, and I entered in just as a member. and um, my really close friend who was the president, um, I was able to talk to her about some fundraising ideas that I had and we were able to implement them together um, equally, officer and member, and um, that's where I really got my foundation in fundraising. And so I would say if you're a member and if you have ideas in like big ideas to like they're not just small. It's like you guys want to dance. You guys want a skating event. You guys want like a big outdoor movie. Um, don't be afraid to contact me with any questions. Don't be afraid to contact your officers. You guys have just as much potential and just as much um, ability to do and make an impact as anyone else, as me, as Andrew, as Jane, as any of the LTGs, and as any of the officers, and that's really how we're going to reach our goal is, is, is if everyone um, works to the best of their ability and everyone really shares and implements their ideas. Yeah, yeah just add on, um, I don't know if we already covered this in this presentation, but um, a lot of the Seattle area uh, members are familiar with Dan Secure, and that was actually um, two years ago that was hosted by uh, put together by three really passionate members. So, uh, like your title or your position, it doesn't limit you in the amount of influence and impact you have um, within your community. So, I really encourage you guys to um, not let your title as a member um, limit you. Instead, um, let that inflate you and um, motivate you to make a bigger impact. Um, so one of the questions was, what did we have to send to project at pnwkeyclub.org? Um, Andrew or Jane, do you want to cover that? Um, yeah. Oh, do you want to talk? Jane, Jane, you can talk. Okay. So this is for our social media day, which is tomorrow. And um, this is just for people who have not already sent a photo of preferably themselves because this is designed to be your profile picture. Um, but essentially, send a picture of yourself to project at pnwkeyclub.org, and we will we will overlay that photo for you. That was on the screen um, while we were talking about that slide. But um, yeah, so we're gonna overlay that photo for you, and on that day, just post that photo along with the blurb that is emailed back to you in that same email. Okay, and the next question is, 
This isn't related to Key Club or KCCP, but I would like to ask you for ideas for service. Our Key Club wants to support KCCP, but we don't want to focus just on fundraising. Can you briefly talk about service projects, ideas that can be done during meetings or um, done during school lunches? Andrew? Um. So this is really like cliche, I guess, in a certain kind of way. But um, what we did last year as a club was around Thanksgiving, we wrote um, thank you cards to all the, um, not only the patients at Seattle Children's um, under the KCCP program, but also um, the doctors who were, doctors and the nurses who were um, helping the patients. So. Um, it might be really simple, but just to write encouraging notes to them, um, just to know that um, you're thinking, just to let them know that you're thinking about them, um, it can really uh, make their make their day. So I can't really think of anything else. At the um, I'll add on. I know some really cool things um, that other clubs have done, and um, the really interesting thing about KCCP is that. Um, like I said before, we're not only raising funds, but we're raising support, and support comes in many ways. And so KCCP funds hospitals or fellows in hospitals, and hospitals have many different needs. Um, I know that no sew blankets have been done in the past. Um, toy drives have been done in the past. Um, I know that one club has done like a little mural to decorate one of the wings in um, the uh, in the children's hospital and it just says like um, it just has all the key clippers sign their name and then it shows how much support that they have for them and it's a really pretty drawing and um, so there are many different ways that you can support KCCP um, think about how you can support a hospital um, if you guys have any questions um, about what they need you guys can always email me or you guys can always directly email the, the hospitals, that would be Seattle Children's Hospital, Dornbecker Children's Hospitals, or BC Children's Hospital. Another question we had is, is there a way to visit Seattle Children's? Um, I know that last year um, we did have divisions visiting Seattle Children's Hospital. Um, we don't have any plans as of now. But if you guys have interest, please feel free to email me and um, I'll work on hopefully getting something set up if possible. Um, I just think that the only reason we haven't held something like that is because uh, we did prior, prior to this year, so last year, and we weren't sure if we'd gain enough support in that this year. But if you guys are interested, please feel free to contact me and reach out to me. I think also um, with the hospital visits, there's a little, um, a lot of limitations within the patient to visitor contact. So um, that might play a factor in the availability of visits as well. Mm -hmm. And by visits, we don't mean visiting the children. We mean visiting the facility and see, meeting the doctors and that aspect of it. So we're meeting what we fund because of medical concerns for the children. Another question is, can you go over all the days for KCCP week? Okay, and yeah, I'll go here. Um, Jane, do you want to explain them again? Sure, I'll do a real quick rundown. So today was the webinar, the first day of the week. Tomorrow is social media day. We've already explained this a couple times, but um, it's essentially reaching out to the people who are not in your immediate communities and having them donate online. And Wednesday will be school emphasis day where we reach out to our educational communities. And this should be an event planned by your officers, but this is very officer and member, um, like heavy, heavily emphasized for officers and members. 
And then Thursday is Share Your Story Day, where we will be releasing a handful of stories that we have collected regarding people's experience with KCCP on the blog. And Friday is the Community Outreach Day, which should be a day planned by your lieutenant governor. So if you have not heard about what you guys have, what, what you guys are planning on doing for that day, um, reach out to your lieutenant governors. Yeah, that was a really okay. quick rundown. Um, another question was how to prioritize money, um, how much goes to DECON or KCCP, um, what should we do in terms of valuing the importance of where our funding goes? Um, well, I personally say 50-50 uh, would be minimum. So, like, when events are hold, held and, like, maybe, like, 10-15%, those would not be ideal. I would say 50-50 is minimum. Um, this is because DECON, funding for DECON, while it is fun and while it is very valuable, um, DECON is a time when we celebrate our service. So, if we're raising money to go celebrate a service where the money could have helped um, a nonprofit organi organization, I think that's kind of reverse thinking and um, maybe not the right mindset. Um, while DECON is very important and um, a big part of like, our key club experience, um, I would say KCCP is kind of our service for the year. Therefore, um, just as important. So 50-50 would be the minimum, I guess I would say. Um, and that being said, when you guys are holding events, if all the proceeds or a majority of the proceeds are not going to KCCP, you guys should not be calling it um, something to cure or something for KCCP because that would be false advertising. Um, the next question is, how much was our district goal and how much have we raised again? Uh, we have, our district goal is $75,000 and so far as of yesterday we have raised $12,000 and $12,514. And it's been a trend um, when seeing fundraising that fundraising has kind of peaked towards decon, like um, towards like Christmas to decon-ish times, and we're hoping to start that momentum earlier so that we can actually reach our goal this year. Um, Another question was, when can I buy merchandise? Uh, so actually the store just closed um, over the summer, but it should be open again soon with new merchandise. Um, it will no longer be the stereotypical or not the stereotypical, but like the old um, navy and gray. And this, with the new designs and the new colors and the new products will be based on, oh, it's open right now. It's open right now. Just kidding. Dimitri says it's available right now. It was reopened. Okay. Until October 20th. Sorry. It was reopened for this, for um, KCCP week until October 20th. But, um, the new merch is coming later, and as of now, it's the same navy and gray. However, um, we will be asking for you guys' input in, uh, in what to design and what colors to keep in mind and what to produce for you guys. But again, it is open right now. That's my bad. Peter was able to open it Okay, until October 20th. Another question is, uh, for a club further away from the hospitals, what are some good ways to personally stay connected to those hospitals? Um, a good way to stay connected is by um, keeping constant contact with your guys' Kiwanis clubs. Your guys' as Kiwanians are um, very involved with KCCP. After all, they're the ones who started it and have continually um, kept it functioning. And so um, contacting your Kiwanis to see what they do and to see how they get involved would be very effective. Another way is that you guys 
can see the fundraising and service project ideas under the resources tab in the Pacific Northwest Key Club website. And th these ideas come up with kind of effective ways in which you can um, implement a change and implement awareness for KCCP and these hospitals, even if you guys are further away. Um, like we said before, the most important part is um, raising support and raising funds. But if you guys are interested, um, we may be able to do something where we interview fellows and doctors. Um, so again, if you guys want to see stuff like that happening, be sure to reach out to me at project.pnwkeyclub.org to see what you guys um, want and what you guys can utilize to further your service. And the last question is, can you further explain Wednesday? I'm just now hearing about a required service project on this day. Okay. Jane, do you want to talk, touch on that? Um, so Wednesday is school emphasis day, correct? Yes, okay. So this is designed to have us reach out to um, our school members who are not associated or who are not in Key Club. And uh, um, our vision for this was to have all club officers plan an event or some way for members to get involved during this day. And it doesn't have to be something big. We do have, um, we sh do we have the link to the fundraising ideas? Um, it was released in an email however, that your LTG should have sent to you. However, that email will be resent after this webinar to all the officer group chats or officer okay, yeah. groups. So we have a, a, a kind of a document that gives general fundraising ideas. You can refer to that if you need. But it doesn't have to be something very big. It can be something uh, as small as wearing your KCCP gear to school or just passing out or hanging out flyers about KCCP. Again, this is very tailored to... Um, your club, and that was our goal. Um, you guys are going to get as involved as your club has the potential to and as your club has the capacity to. And um, try to challenge yourselves, but keep it very reasonable. And think of ways to effectively convey the missions of KCCP to your schools. OK. OK, so I have one more question. Um, how much of an impact does Kiwanis have on Key Club? Which is kind of not a KCCP question, but Andrew, do you want to talk about that? Uh, yeah, can we go back to the Kiwanis slide? Yeah. So Kiwanis, um, without Kiwanis, um, Key Club wouldn't be able to be sponsored in the in charter in the first place, and also. Um, our events, um, they always require um, the presence of Kwanians and um, they try, they really try to support us in any way possible so with um, whether it's like chaperoning or um, actual like monetary funds. So when you guys are planning fundraisers for KCCP or not even doing that but um, holding any kind of club functions, I really um, suggest that you guys would reach out to Qantas, your, your sponsoring Qantas club to um, see how they can help with that and before, even before um, you guys need that help, I would highly suggest you guys um, stay connected with your um, Qantas and um, always like participate in their service projects and uh, stay uh, updated with their club activities to um, make sure that you guys really have that bond and um, it's just benefit from a mutual relationship. Kiwanis is really cool. I'm going to kind of bounce off of Andrew, but Kiwanis is really cool in the sense that they are, they have the same missions and they have the same visions as we as key clubbers do, except they're adults. And it's really cool to see that um, throughout the generations, throughout different um, like parent organizations and um, they can really help you with coming up with different ideas and help you with maybe financial need at times, maybe. Um, they're kind of 
like your go-to people. Like, they're like it is your parent organization. They're like your parents. So I would really, really recommend maybe sending an email to your Kiwanis president um, or visiting a meeting that they're having um, soon before the school year is too busy or before the school year like starts a little heavy, he heavier. So um, yeah, that'd be really cool. Um, another question is how do I connect with my club? How do I connect my club with local Kiwanis if we haven't done anything with them before? So first step would be to find their contact information. Um, so if you don't know um, which Qantas is sponsoring you guys, then you guys can definitely check out the uh, newly updated district directory or even the Qantas website. And from there, um, try to contact um, the Qantas Club's officers um, and get connected. And um, it's really important from that point on that you guys even um, possibly have a Qantas advisor for your key club and um, that person will be basically the link between your club and your sponsoring Qantas club and um, a really good way to uh, make your presence make your presence of the fault um, with your sponsoring Qantas club would be go to their meetings so I know um, a lot of the Qantas club have um, meetings during the day or in the morning so sometimes as high school students it might be hard to make them um, but if you guys happen to have a break one day or something I would suggest showing up at a meeting and introducing yourself and briefly talking about Key Club and um, also when communicating uh, make sure to stick to email and um, keep them updated with what your club happens to be doing and overall, having a strong communication is key to starting a good relationship. So I hope you guys uh, keep all that in mind when trying to reach out to your Qantas club. And this kind of allows for a leadership opportunity. Um, I know that some clubs with or some clubs within our district do have a Qantas liaison, and this Qantas liaison's job is to go to Qantas meetings once in a while keep in constant contact with um, their Qantas liaison because they should have a Qantas or they may have a Qantas liaison for key clubs um, or Qantas advisor and to really just keep them updated and to get keep updated with what they're, they're doing. Um, if you're a member and you're interested in that position or that opportunity, maybe talk to your officers, your president, or if you're a president or officer who is interested in having this option available for your clubs, so maybe implementing that. Um, but that'd be a really, really cool and effective way to uh, keep people connected. Uh, someone asked if the deadline for overlays is tomorrow. So this overlay campaign, this social media campaign starts tomorrow, but it never ends. So. Um, just email me project at project at pnwkeyclub.org um, anytime you have, but it would be really ideal to have it by tomorrow so that you can post tomorrow um, to the, for the respective day of social media day. However, if that doesn't work out and if that's not possible, then that's fine too. Um, just feel free to send it to me anytime soon um, and I'll get that to you as soon as possible. Okay, if I want to show my club examples of the overlay for social media day, where could I find those? Um, if this sounds like it's an office or so, I actually emailed them out to you a couple of days ago, and I also, or maybe it was yesterday, and I also posted on the Facebook group, uh, the Pacific Northwest Key Club Facebook group. So please do that. Uh, please look at that, and you can see that. Um, that being said, I think the last thing that we're going to say is um, if you guys are kind of maybe didn't know about 
um, KCCP like as in depth as you desire to. And if you guys have been feeling um, kind of uncommunicated with, um, please consider if you guys are in the uh, or subscribe to the biweekly emails. You can do this by going to the Pacific Northwest Key Club, so pnwkeyclub.org, and you can sign up for the biweekly emails. And through these emails, you'll get basically a lot of the information that we covered um, about KCCP Week in your email and for their campaigns as well. Um, these will be big updates as well as big events and big spotlights um, that you guys should be involved in and up to date with. Um, if there's not any more questions, we'd like to thank you all for coming and we would encourage you guys to email project at pnwkeyclub.org with any other questions you may have and to um, feel free to reach out to me, Andrew, or Jane um, with any concerns or dramas that you guys may have. So thanks for joining us today. Bye.